This coach needs an enema. Hey Romers, it's Jamie back at you again here today. So what we got going today, um, you saw the last video that I did where I redid my uh, roof seams and things of that nature. So I figured being that today is 104, which is a perfect day for getting wet, as you can tell I'm dressed to get wet. I got my swim trunks on and my flip flops and I got my shirt that'll dry real quick if I get wet. Um, we're gonna change out the anode rod inside our water heater today. So basically what that is, Right here is where your anode rod is. And what the anode rod does is when water sits in there, depending on where you're at, some water could have a lot of minerals and some would be better than others. It just depends. And we have a filter on our, our uh, hose, but that doesn't take out everything that could uh, basically rust out the inside of your water heater. So what the anode rod does is kind of a sacrificial rod. What that does is when the water's in there, instead of it eating at the tank, your, the tank in your water heater, it's gonna eat up the anode rod. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna change out my anode rod. You should do this about once every year. I was figuring, what am I gonna do in 104 temperature? I don't wanna do this when it's in the wintertime when it's cold, because I'm gonna be getting wet. So it's 104 right now. I have no problem getting wet, it's not gonna bother me, so. But what we're gonna do today, is, like I said, we're gonna get this, take this out. We're gonna drain it out. We're also gonna check to make, make sure all our fittings and everything are in good shape. I'm also gonna spray some soapy water on these connections just to make sure we don't have any propane leaks or, le leaks or anything of that nature. So I'm gonna show you the four things that you actually need to be able to change this out. It takes about maybe 15 minutes to do. So here are the things we're gonna to need to get this job done today. Um, as you can see, I got a torque wrench. You don't necessarily need a torque wrench. I have two boys. I think it's a good idea to go in and take dad's tools and never return them. So the socket wrench that goes to this is missing. So I don't have that. So I have to use my torque wrench that I have here. This is the new anode rod. My anode rod basically cost me $22. They range anywhere between $12 and $40. Just depends on your water heater. And the thing you want to do before you start this is make sure that you pull the anode rod out and make sure you have the correct one because there's a certain anode rod for each water heater. You're also going to need Teflon tape and that's to put on these threads on the anode rod because if you don't put them on there it's going to leak. And then the last thing we're going to need, we're going to need soapy water. That's just to take uh, check the propane connections, make sure we have no leaks there. So like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take the anode rod out. Um, the people that own this motorhome prior to me buying it had this plug and I just noticed this when I went to go get the new anode rod because I didn't know which one was for this so I took this out put this plug in so apparently they had this uh, just for this purpose so it was here so I'm gonna leave it there um, what we're gonna do now um, one thing I do want to say is when you're doing this if you don't have any kind of plug or anything like that um, if you look here this is the the tag for my water heater and in there it says uh, who makes it mine is a Atwood and then it says the model number it also says the serial number if you were to go to a parts RV parts place and you gave them the the name of the water heater the manufacturer and also the model and the serial number, you'd be able to get the exact anode rod without having to take it out. Uh, we want to make sure and shut the propane off so that we don't, uh, just in case, we, we don't want any, obviously we don't want the fire coming on or anything like that. Also inside our coach we have a two different shutoffs. We have the shutoff for if it's running off of AC power or also if it's running off of DC power. So I shut the power off to my batteries and we're not hooked up to AC right now so I don't have to worry about that. We just want to make sure if you're in a park and you're doing this while you're camping to make sure and shut those buttons off in your coach to make sure that you're not going to do anything to 
to have this wanting to turn on while you're doing this because you could damage damage the water. In our coach in the bathroom area, um, this is where you can check the status of your tanks, how full they are, how much propane you have. But right here, there's also a switch for the water heater. So that's the one I was talking about. We want that one off. And then what I do is in our battery compartment, I turn the batteries that are for the coach part of it, I mean the house batteries, excuse me, the house batteries, I make sure that's shut off so there's no 12 volt powder running. And then also, like I said, we wanna shut off the propane. And it's not very tight. Um, and when you go put it back together, you don't wanna make it really tight. So that's just gonna drain out. And as you can see, this is the old anode rod. And you can tell where it used to be the same diameter right here all the way down. And this is all, this is a sacrificial part of it and it's worn away. You can see all the rust and everything. If we didn't have this in there, this is what it'd be doing to the inside of your tank. So we don't want that. So that's the reason for doing this once a year. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let that drain out. And as I'm doing that, letting that drain out, I'm just gonna check all my connections, make sure everything's good here, make sure all these connections, there's no rust or any, any kind of uh, spider webs or things like that, so it all stays in good working order. So what I did is I just turned my propane back on just to see, to make sure that uh, I don't have any leaks here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, shoot some of this soapy water on here just to see if I get any bubbling or anything like that. And if there was a leak, you would see it start to bubble. And I'm not seeing anything, so that's good. If you did, you would just wanna make sure and tighten these down. So take a wrench and go ahead and tight these, tighten these down. You may have to take them apart and reapply some Teflon tape or what have you, but you just wanna make sure you have no leaking there. Okay, the other thing I'm doing is I'm just looking at my threads here. Just kind of putting my finger in here, making sure that we have no exit, the old Teflon tape in there. Because uh, when I put the new anode rod in, like I said, I'm going to put new Teflon tape on there. So you just want to make sure this is nice and clean. So we're all good there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, being that this is all drained out, um, this is something I've made on my own. It was uh, part of a mister system that I put on my house. And these are some extra, par extra parts that I had. This is a little shut off valve that I hooked up to it. There's actually a thing that you can get on Amazon and I'll put it down in the link below that uh, will work just as well. Um, but I just wanna put this in there and flush it around, make sure we get everything nice and clean in there. So I'm just gonna put this in here. And uh, like here, I got my shut off and I'm gonna go ahead and let the water go in there. And this is where I'm gonna get wet because you know it's gonna come shooting back at me. No, not too bad. So I just wanna move that around in there, make sure I kinda rinse it all out. And then luckily for me, I'm not seeing a lot of stuff coming out, so we're looking pretty good. Sometimes what you'll see is you'll see like big white chunks come out, and that's uh, from the minerals. But we look like we're okay. But this is why I'm doing it at 104 and wearing uh, swim trunks and flip flops. If I was doing this in the wintertime, this would not be fun. <laughs> okay, so I think we're pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off, let it completely drain out. What do you think, Dex? What do you think, Dex? Don't drink that water. Yes, not drink water. Don't drink that water. Help her? You want to help her today? So I just wanted to show you guys, uh, here's the old anode rod, and this is the new one. You can see the difference in size, how much this is uh, basically deteriorated. So. so I'm just putting Teflon tape on here, um, just to make sure we don't have any leaking. Uh, and this stuff's real cheap. You can get it from Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, what have you. And it's a couple bucks for a roll like this. When we put this in, we just want to make sure that we do not cross-thread it. 
um, you'll know if you cross thread it because it'll stop and it won't screw in real easily. So this should just thread in real easily. Just like that. So I can do that with my hand so I know I'm good. And then we just want to go ahead and tighten this back down. And like I said, I have my torque wrench so I can torque this down to 1,500 pounds. Just kidding. The only reason I'm using a torque wrench is like I said, my boys like using dad's tools and not returning them. And you don't want to get this too tight. You just want to get it kind of snug, but you don't want to over tighten it. It should be good right there. I'm going to clean this all up so it's nice and clean. We don't have any sitting water in here. It could, uh, you know, get on this and cause it to rust or what have you. I'm just going to wipe this all down. We've already checked this. We checked all our fit uh, connections and everything just to make sure we're good to go. So the whole purpose of going through this exercise of changing out the anode rod is another maintenance thing. Just like when I did my roof, I went up there and checked to see if there was any uh, seams or what have you that were cracking or coming loose. And I went up and addressed those issues and fixed them. Uh, it's kind of the same idea here. If we change this anode rod and we do it once a year, we don't have to worry about the inside of our tank being rusted out because we have this anode rod doing its job. Um, as we can see, this anode rod did its job. These components are not cheap and I don't want to have to, I'd rather spend 20 bucks and 20 minutes out of my day pulling out this anode rod and doing the maintenance and cleaning out the inside of the tank instead of a couple years down the road having to buy a new water heater. So that's the purpose of this whole thing. Dexter and I hope this video was helpful. <laughs> and if you have any questions, whether it's regarding this video or any of the other maintenance videos that I've done, go ahead and put them in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to help you out any way that I can. Keep up with Rosie's maintenance and renovation by hitting that subscribe button and make sure to ring that bell so you'll be notified each time we put out a new video. Okay, rumors, let's wrap it up.